In this WrestleTalk news, backstage details on Dakota Kai returning to WWE and her new faction, an update on Johnny Gargano possibly going back to WWE, a hilarious WWE botch, and more. Subscribe and enable notifications to Always On for daily wrestling news videos. Support WrestleTalk! Last night's SummerSlam was the first premium live event under the Daddy Trips creative era, and it kicked off with a bang. Not only did we have my personal match of the night of Bianca Belair defeating Becky Lynch to retain the Raw Women's Championship and thus turning Lynch into a babyface, Trips did what Trips does best. He books NXT talent better than Vince ever could, and he made them into a faction. It was a show so good it made Kat Dennings a fan. Following the match, Bayley made her return to WWE, which had been heavily reported and speculated in the weeks leading up to SummerSlam. But she wasn't alone, first being flanked by a returning Dakota Kai, as well as the former E. Io Shirai, now Io Sky. Shirai wasn't factored into any major plans for the new Vince McMahon and Bruce Pritchard led NXT 2.0, especially after she picked up an injury. And the reports were that she was just waiting for her contract to expire in the coming months and she would then head back to Japan. Dave Meltzer even noted that she'd basically already had one foot out of the door of WWE. Sean Rossap over at Fightful Select reiterated that Shirai had no creative plans in NXT, and when he asked if she had re signed with the company, a WWE official could and confirmed the news, but said it appears so. Dakota Kai was part of the most recent NXT cuts back in April. Despite working several dark matches for both Raw and SmackDown, SRS reported via Fightful Select that Kai was told that there was no creative direction for her, which is pretty evident as she won the NXT Women's Tag Team Championships and was then released a couple of weeks later. Several WWE writers were baffled that she wasn't included in the 2021 main roster draft, according to Fightful. SRS adds that Kai was a name that many many figured Triple H would make a priority to bring back once he took over as head of creative, and he was clearly successful in doing so. Since Kai left WWE, she trademarked the name King Kota and was lining up her next wrestling gig, with SRS reporting that multiple companies were interested in signing her, including All Elite Wrestling, who had a short introduction. While Fightful write that the introduction was brief, there were some on the roster pushing for her to join the company, but she's chosen to re-sign with WWE. WWE instead, presumably because Triple H is now running the show. It ties back into a report from Fightful Select last week following the news of Triple H taking over as head of creative, where several ex-WWE names that had either been released or let their contracts expire said that they had zero confidence in a main roster run by Vince McMahon. But things are now different with daddy trips behind the wheel. In fact, one wrestler who let their WWE contract expire so they could sign with AEW said that if they knew they were going up from NXT to a Triple H-led WWE WWE, they would have re-signed with WWE. One other released talent noted to Fightful that Triple H and Stephanie McMahon being in charge has greatly increased the chances that they'll return to WWE rather than going to the competition. But that's not the only interesting note about this new group of Bailey, Dakota Kai and Io Sky. When writing about the new group, Sean Rossap over at Fightful Select says if it wasn't obvious, this new stable is a product of the new WWE regime, which would make sense. It features NXT favorite Bayley and also NXT faves Dakota Kai and Io Shirai, both of whom can now get the main roster runs they never would have had when Vince McMahon had the book. To prove this point, SRS notes that this faction was actually pitched earlier this year, before Dakota Kai was released, so it has to be before April of 2022, and Vince McMahon rejected the faction. Apparently there were also versions of the group pitched that included Raquel Gonzalez and Kaylee Ray before Raquel was brought up to the main roster with a new name and Kaylee Ray was repackaged to Alba Fire in NXT 2.0. But Bailey, Io Shirai, Dakota Kai and Edge, oh yeah, by the way, Edge also returned on the show, were not the only rumored names to be returning at this year's SummerSlam. Last week, WWE announced that the advertised match of Seth Rollins versus Matt Riddle was now off the SummerSlam card due to an injury suffered by Riddle. It quickly came out via several reports that this was a kayfabe injury and the match would most likely just take place at Clash at the Castle in September. Seth put out a tweet that he was sad not to be on the SummerSlam card, with Triple H retweeting tweeting him to say that he heard his complaints. It led to rampant speculation from fans that Rollins would get a different match on the pay-per-view instead, with the number one candidate being Johnny Gargano. Gargano was in the same town as SummerSlam over the same weekend as he was there for StarCast, where he was part of his What Next panel hosted by Inside the Ropes' Kenny McIntosh, and he's been a Triple H favorite for many years, being the face of the NXT brand while Trips was running the show. However, it looks like this was just a case of fans getting ahead of themselves, as PW 
Insider reported ahead of SummerSlam that Gargano was not backstage at the show and at no point was he scheduled to be there. But there is always a chance he will return. When speaking with Wrestling Inc, his friend and longtime tag partner and rival Tommaso Ciampa said, I think the chances of him returning were always really good. Maybe they're better now. Johnny Gargano, WWE return confirmed. Gargano recently appeared on Impact Wrestling in a video talking about Alex Shelley, but Fightful are reporting that this was done as a favor to a friend and Johnny Wrestling is not in talks to join Impact Wrestling. Going by the Fast Nationals, which aren't always the most reliable source of information for ratings, this past Friday SmackDown pulled in slightly less viewers than last week with an estimated 2.07 million viewers. Last week's show was always going to be higher, of course, because it came off the back of the Vince McMahon retiring news. The show kicked off with an absolutely barn-burning match between Drew McIntyre and Sheamus, where Drew pinned the Celtic Warrior to become the number one contender to the Universal Championship at Clash at the Castle in September. The match was advertised as a good old-fashioned Johnny Brook match, which featured lots of pub things like barrels, a bar, and flags of both Ireland and Scotland to represent the two nationalities of the guys in the match. Only they weren't flags of Ireland and Scotland. While the Scottish flag was correct, it was pointed out by many watching the show that the Ireland flag was in fact not the Ireland flag, and instead the flag for the Ivory Coast. You can see how they made the error, they do look very similar. As you would expect, this botch was pointed out by Matthew of Botchamania on his Twitter account, which Seamus himself responded to by saying he's a dual citizen of both Ireland and the Ivory Coast, so it's not a botch. And he lent into the error even further by posting an image of him posing with a pint of Guinness, saying he did the match for the Ivory Coast. I bloody love Seamus. And speaking of people I love, and Brian Danielson did a special episode of the sessions with Renee Paquette at StarCast yesterday he talked about his famed time on Talking Smack during the period of his career when he wasn't allowed to wrestle by WWE due to his history of concussions. That era of Talking Smack, where Danielson and Renee hosted, is really revered by fans. After all, it was the setting of that brilliant Miz promo, but also because they would often push the boundaries of what WWE felt was acceptable for their programming. And it turns out, according to Danielson, the show was a little bit of a nightmare for him, and he only enjoyed his time when he was trying to get fired by doing things like talking about fisting and the size of James Elworth's dick. He added that WWE asked him to stop talking about this, but he kept doing it because I was so frustrated at not being cleared to wrestle that I was ready to go. And you should be ready to go. Go to our viewing party of WWE Clash at the Castle. Segway. WWE are heading back to the UK for a pay-per-view for the first time in nearly three decades, but not everyone could get tickets for the show, and that includes us here at WrestleTalk. So rather than just sit at home and watch the show alone, we decided to put on a party to watch Clash at the Castle together at the Joiner on Worship in London. The venue is right by Liverpool Street, so it's got great access to the tube lines and national rail services. And we're going to have an after party when the show is finished, so you can have a drink and chat with the guys and girls from WrestleTalk, No Rolls Barred, and Parts Fun Known. Andy Danson's going to be there. You've got to come and see Andy. Tickets are on sale right now for just £12.50. The link for those are in the video description down below. We look forward to seeing you all there and we can jam that jam together while watching Drew McIntyre beat Roman Reigns for the Universal Championship. It's gonna happen, right? The Triple H Premium Live Event. Era kicked off in the most Triple H way possible. Maximize those entrances with it being a long way to the ring. Becky Lynch and Bianca Belair were first up in what felt like a poetic addressing of the wrongs of the last year of McMahon. At last year's Summerfest, Lynch returned as a heel, which the crowd never really fully bought into. 